welcome to another edition of Almost Martha. And today I'm going to be making one of my very favorite recipes. I know I say that about all my recipes, but I'm sharing with you all of my favorite recipes so I can say it. So today I'm making my favorite chicken pot pie recipe, and it's from Marshall Fields. So maybe some of you out there remember, but Marshall Fields was a, a really big department store in Chicago, and they had the best chicken pot pie. It was absolutely delicious. This is their recipe. I have made one little adjustment, which I'll go through with you, but it's really terrific, and it's really not that difficult to make. So I'm going to go through the steps with you today. But I also want you to remember that after Thanksgiving, yeah, you can just substitute chicken for turkey and then you've got a turkey pot pie. So it's a great way to use those leftovers. So here we go, Marshall Fields chicken pot pie. We're gonna make our crust. Uh, this crust is slightly different from other crusts that I've made, uh, but it's also very similar. So I'm gonna use my food processor. And that is a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. I also have half a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to put that right in. And before I even get started, I'm just going to mix in that salt a little bit. So now, just like many of my other recipes, we are going to start. It's going to take a stick of unsalted butter that is nicely chilled. And we're just going to put this butter in, you know, a, a few tablespoons at a time. And then we're going to pulse it in to incorporate the butter a little bit. Okay. So I'm using that lovely Irish butter that I like so much. Just have a few more to go. Okay. Couple more. Yep. Okay, so now you should be able to see the butter, almost like little butter balls in there. So it's a... Uh, looking rather meal-like, but this recipe also calls for a quarter cup of shortening. So when they say shortening, they mean like, you know, Crisco, right? So it's that solid shortening. And I know it's probably not as good for you, but that's what it calls for, and that's what I'm going to use because my mother used Crisco in biscuits for many, 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 many years. And it really makes a nice soft biscuit. And I think that's what this is going to do for this dough. You don't really want a hard dough for a chicken pot pie, right? If you use all butter, that's what you might get. You want something nice and soft. Okay, so now we have, we've got it pilling up. I've got some little balls in there, which is good. So now I'm gonna add ice water. So I just make a little jar of ice water and I'm gonna start adding my water in one tablespoon at a time, hitting my pulse button. That's one, two. Yeah, I think we're I think we're we're there at two. Maybe just a tad more, not a full tablespoon. Set between two to three tablespoons of chilled water. There we go, we have a dough. So I'm assembling some of my ingredients for the pot pie, but first we're gonna deal with our crust. So I'm gonna get this out of the way. And guess what we're gonna do? We are gonna get out our trusty parchment paper because we're gonna roll this out on parchment paper and then we're gonna chill it. So let me get my dough out. Now this recipe says dust with flour. I don't know that we really have to do that with the parchment paper. Just in case. Oh, here's a little tiny bit of flour here. I can just 
dust that in. Yeah, you know, it's much more pliable thanks to the shortening. So it, it does feel like a much softer dough. So now I'm just going to sprinkle a tiny bit because that's what it that's what it said to do. And now I'm going to put another sheet on top. This is that trick I learned in in Paris about not to overflower your dough. Ooh, this dough is very soft, very very soft, which means it's going to roll like a dream. So I'm just going to roll this out, try to get the thickness that we're looking for here. And once I get it to the thickness, then we're going to put it in the refrigerator. And chill it up. Yeah, that really rolled out really easily, right? So there we go. Yeah, that shortening really did a nice job of softening that dough up. But now I'm kind of looking for a different shape. I don't want a big round because I'm going to do something a little, I'm going to do what the recipe calls for, which is to make individual pot pies. Normally, I just make one big pot pie. So then I would just sort of roll this out in one big thing, and then I would just put it on top of the entire chicken pot pie. But we're just not going to do that this time. This time we're going to do exactly what the recipe calls for and make little individual cutest pie servings. Okay. I think that's good. You really, you really want, um, what's your favorite part of a chicken pot pie? Mine is the crust. Mine is the crust. So we don't want to get it too thin because then we're going to be missing out on a lot of that crust goodness. But I also have to make sure that we've got enough for all of our pot pies. So I want to remember how many we're going to make and then make sure we've got enough dough. Okay. So that's it. Dough is rolled. Now all I'm going to do is put this in the refrigerator and let it chill while we start making the inside of our pot pie. We're going to get our vegetables all ready to go into the pot. And it takes about three medium carrots. My carrots were not all the same size. So I just have uh, two skinny carrots and two bigger carrots. <laughs> And it says to cut these on the diagonal because you, you kind of want to see the carrot. But you also, if you have a really big carrot, remember, people are trying to eat it, so you don't want it to be too gigantic. So if it's really big, I would, I would cut it again just to make sure. It's also going to you know cook well, too. So like this small carrot, we could do very easily on the diagonal and get that nice, beautiful cut. Bigger carrots um, might be harder to do that with. So you'll notice I have a, I have a yellow carrot and I have two orange carrots because I had these rainbow carrots in the refrigerator and they come in all different colors, but they're a carrot. They taste like a carrot. Kind of gives a, another little color, you know, to what you're making. So let me finish putting these on the diagonal. We're going to do the same thing with our celery, and I've already chopped uh, one, it says one large onion, but you know, that could be anything. So it's a, a one cup and a quarter of chopped onion. So that's what's in my measuring cup there. So we're going to put six tablespoons of unsalted butter in our pot. We're going to let that get nice and melted. Then we're going to put our celery and our onions in the pot and let that cook for about 10 minutes. We want them to get a little soft, but we're not in there to brown it. We just want to soften them up. So I'll finish chopping and I will add all of that to the pot as we sort of move over to the stove. So hang on. And remember, I'm using um, a rotisserie chicken. So it's chicken that's already cooked. The original recipe called you that for you know for you to stew your chicken. So that's why this would work with your Thanksgiving leftovers, with your leftover turkey. You could even take those turkey bones and make a nice stock out of it. 
Take those turkey bones, add some onions, more celery and carrots, and cook that down to enrich that stock. And that would be some really good stock to use in your chicken pot pie. You can also do the same thing with the rotisserie chicken if you have the time. You can debone it and then throw those bones in the pot with the same kind of mix, and then you'll get a richer stock out of it. So just remember that for when you have some time. All right. And these go in the pot with our six tablespoons of unsalted butter. So our vegetables have been cooking for about 10 minutes. They're not, they're not brown, but they, they appear to be a little softer. It's sort of reduced a little bit. So all of that's good. So the next thing that we're going to do is sort of make our, we're going to make our sauce, right? So that's that creamy goodness that's inside the chicken pot pie. And how we do that is by making a sort of a roux but this is boy this is a really easy roux so i've got half a cup of all-purpose flour and i'm going to add that right into my pot and it's going to help absorb that butter that we put in there it's also going to coat those vegetables a little bit but that's okay they'll come uncoated so now that i put my flour in here we are going to cook it just a little bit, maybe for about a minute before we go to the next step. So everything kind of looks a little gloopy because it's the flour that's coated everything. Give it a minute. I'm just kind of flattening everything down in the pan a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to add my stock. So I'm using bone broth because I really like bone broth instead of you know, plain old chicken stock. A little more protein, which is good, but it also has a little more flavor. So about two and a half cups. This is about four cups in here. I also just made a little bit of a little vegetable base stock. I use this better than bouillon. It just helps to enrich uh, the stock. If you're not making your stock from scratch, it kind of helps give it a little more uh, flavor on the inside. Okay. So now we're going to let that flour do its work. And start to thicken a little bit. And then in a moment, we're going to add milk. Okay. I have a cup and a half of whole milk, which I'm going to add right in my pot. And that's what's going to give you that nice creamy, you know, inside. Okay. I'm going to decrease my heat a little bit because we want this to simmer for about 10 minutes. But keep your eye on it. But we're just going to let this simmer for 10 minutes to get all those flavors to melt together. Now we're at the finishing portion of our sauce. I'm just going to put a little dribble on my finger. Mm. Oh, that's really good. That is really good. So now I, I'm going to add about a teaspoon of diced crushed thyme. Adding that in. Got about three quarter a cup of fresh or frozen peas. These were frozen and I thawed them out. And then we're going to add our chicken. I think that was close to about three cups of chicken. If you stew your chicken, it's whatever's on your chicken. Right. If you got leftover, you just fill it as full of chicken or turkey as you would like. Oh, you guys, that's really nice. That is really beautiful. Hope you can see it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Beautiful and delicious. So now we have to go to the next. Oh, wait. Wow. Oh, this is one more, one more ingredient. 
This recipe calls for a quarter cup of dry sherry. First time I made it, I made it with Madeira and I loved it. Then I realized, oh, I used the wrong sherry. So the second time I made it, I used a dry sherry and it just wasn't as good. So I'm going to use some Madeira sherry right into the sauce. And then we're going to let this cook just a little bit to cook that alcohol out. But this, I, I really think Madeira gives it such a beautiful flavor, sort of a very special flavor. So we're going to let that simmer for just a minute and see if we can cook some of that alcohol out just in case. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's what, that's, that's what I'm talking about right there. That is... <laughs> That is some good stuff. Okay, so the next step is going to be to put this in our bowls, and we're going to put our crust right on top and brush it with some egg white. Um, normally, it calls for like a big ramekin. We're going to do something a little bigger because, you know, there's only four of us tonight for dinner, so we're going to do something a little bigger, and it has a little more crust on the top. So hang on, that's next. As soon as I let this cook for just a minute or two, We'll be ready to move to the next step. These are my bowls, so I am just going to put it down. I'm ignoring the mayhem. Because uh, there's always mayhem. Okay, so here's one, and it's going to fit. We want it to be slightly bigger. So now I'm just going to use that as my pattern, and I'm going to cut the other circles to roughly the same size. Okay. Okay, so I now have my four circles. A little thin right there. I'm going to add a little more to it. It's, I can feel it starting to warm up, and I've just pulled this out of the refrigerator. So I can feel this dough warming already. So we got to work fast, okay? Now I'm going to fill my bowls and be right back. I have my bowls filled. So now, but not all the way to the top, because I, I really kind of want it to bubble just a little bit, right? I've got to cook. So I'm going to rest this pie crust down in here. It'll fall into the bowl ever so slightly. Which is fine because when we put it in the oven, that's going to be sort of bubbling up underneath it, right? Okay. Now I chilled this crust for, for you know about 30 minutes, and boy, it's warming up fast thanks to that shortening that's in there. Would be staying pretty chilled if it was just an all butter crust. Okay, so just a little bit. A little bit, see where it's sort of weakening a little bit. Probably the heat is drawing it down. Okay, now I'm going to take a knife and I'm going to slit this crust because we want steam to escape. Okay, that's great. The next thing I'm going to do, just real quick, oh, I'm losing my crust in there. Come on. We want this crust to overhang just a little bit. We want it to sort of cling to the cling to the cup. Okay. Come on now, little crust. And my fork. We're gonna crimp this on the side. Kind of get those little crimp marks in there. And the final thing we're going to do is we're going to brush some egg white on the top. 
cling, cling for your life, little crust. Hold on, hold on. The heat of the mixture is helping to melt this crust really quickly. So we're going to work fast and get this in the oven. I don't even have to turn it on. Okay. So here's my egg wash. Just using a little brush. I'm going to brush it on here. And it's, it's collapsing down into the mixture a little bit, which is fine. Got to have some room. Make sure you kind of get everywhere. Yeah, that's what it is. It's just the heat of that filling in there. Okay. I'm going to put these on a big cookie sheet and pop them right in the oven and let them start cooking. Now, the mixture is already cooked, so really what we're cooking is just the crust. Okay. Oh, beautiful. Here we go. Here they are. Now, I pulled these out a tad early because I'm going to wait until we're a little closer to eat, and then I'm going to put them back in and let them finish. But as we can see, we've got our nice crust. We did have a little sinkage here. That crust was a little, uh, a little too warm. But these turned out perfectly. So thicker crust, I think, uh, it is the shortening that made that so soft. But this is going to be so good. So, so, so good. So I'm just going to let these sit as my guests are coming in. And then I'll just throw them in the oven maybe 15 minutes before we eat just to sort of reheat everything and let that crust finish up. But I think it's going to be great. So go to almost-martha.com for this recipe and the final picture of what this looks like. I think it's going to be great. And uh, you can use this with your turkey leftovers after Thanksgiving. So it's a chicken pot pie or turkey pot pie, whatever that you need it to be. So thanks for joining. Hi, Mom. I'll see you soon. And looking forward to our next installment of Almost Martha. Thanks for joining. Bye.